how's everyone doing welcome to my how to play king k rule now in this video i'm going to teach you the basics of king k rule how to play his neutral how to approach how to camp how to recover what mechanics matter for the character that differentiates him from other characters in the game what things you should be doing what things you should not be doing all the basics of king k rule will be covered in this video now with that said so let me just preface this by saying that King K. Rool is one of the most fun and unique characters in the game. He has a bunch of mechanics that not only make him different from the other heavies in the game, but just any other character. And I think it's really cool that they also added him because the fans wanted him in. With that said, let's get started. First thing that I want to mention is that King K. Rool has an armor mechanic. Now, a bunch of his moves, throughout his moves, and not every move, but just a bunch of moves, have an armor mechanic very similar to super armor where like if i do neutral and cloud attacks me i will actually go through the attack let me show you a very quick example you see how the armor actually beat out the attack but now i have a crack in my stomach now this armor actually has uh, a limit so while you will beat moves with the armor like that and you will still take damage the armor has a limit once it cracks enough it eventually breaks and it's kind of like your shield breaking and you're vulnerable for a very long time this means that while king k rules armor is very good to beat out a bunch of moves and making him very very effective at traits more than anything he's very efficient at traits because he usually has the armor to protect him but you can't have used it the whole time because otherwise you will be rendered unable to defend yourself mainly because the armor eventually breaks now as long as you keep that in mind um i can move on with the rest of the guide now the other thing that i want to mention is that king k rule has a bunch of different moves um, and all his moves do very very specific things now one thing i want to go over is that a lot of his moves vary you uh and they put you in a grounded state where you're vulnerable for example his down throw buries you down so you have to watch out for that he's down till buries you down as well so those two moves um one thing you have to understand about variants uh is that when you get buried you take reduced knockback um so for example if i bury my opponent down and then i force smash it won't be quite as strong as if i hit him with a normal force smash at that percentage however um while you're buried uh, there's a lot of things you can do. First of all, you can mash out of it. So while this may seem like a very powerful combo, like down throw, force smash, and well, they die, you can actually just mash out of that really quick, which means that down throw is not very good at lower percents, but rather very good at higher percents uh, when they can't really mash out in time. So keep that in mind, same as down throw. Now, <clears throat> now that we explained the variant mechanic, let me go over a few of his moves. Now, let's just start out with the basics. Now, let's go with his jab combo. The jab combo does a decent amount of damage, I will say. The thing about his jab combo is that the jab actually comes out at a pretty decent speed. And I'm actually a, a fan of it because simply because there's going to be plenty of situations where you're going to be near uh, next to an opponent. And you can just whip out the jab combo. It's pretty effective. It does a good amount of damage for the jab. Very consistent. Um, it doesn't kill or set up for a combo, but it's just a good get out of me move. Just works out pretty decently. Um, now, the move that you have to watch out for is Porto. Now, this move is amazing. Um, this move has super armor and it has the belly super armor, which means that anytime someone's approaching you, you can Porto like this. And since the game allows you to run and do a tilt out of it, this means that if someone's approaching you, you can just back out and do a tilt to remain control uh, of the stage. Now, this is very important because there's a lot of characters in the game that will actually approach you um, and just, they might potentially just, all right, just use a sword and just get in your range and mess you up. But Fortil stops everything. Fortil is one of King K. Rool's main tools and it's very, very important you get used to this tool and you use it as much as possible because it will make a big difference in neutral. It is a huge tool and you win a neutral. When someone's jumping in or you want to trade with a move, four tilt is your go-to. Now, then we have down tilt. Down tilt as a whole, I don't find it very useful in neutral simply because I can use four tilt in every situation I can use down tilt. So it doesn't make it very useful. However, it does have a significant hitbox. So you can actually use it from pretty far like this. If for some reason you need something like that, let's say someone's charging a smash attack or something like that, you can use that um, to get through to them. You can also use this move around the ledge as well, uh, where you can hit someone uh, at the ledge or coming up with down tilt. It's not a bad idea to use it there, although I use this move kind of rarely. Up tilt, the fantastic anti-arrow. Um, a very useful use for this move is that when people are standing on platforms, you can use up tilt. When someone jumps in above your fourth tilt, you can use up tilt. It goes really high up and it has a really nice hitbox. 
Right, I'm a big, big fan of this move. You can also combo it into itself. So that's pretty useful. I see a lot of people use that up down throw because people usually mash out of it in a jump. And then you can catch them as they're going up. Keep in mind, the sweet spot of this move is at the beginning of it. Whereas if you hit them with the tip of it, it does less damage. Now, in terms of, let's just move over to smash attacks. Now, we have down smash, up smash, and force smash. Now, force smash is absolutely ridiculous in terms of strength. It does a crazy amount of damage. I, or when I mean damage, I mean knockback. I don't understand why it is <laughs> so strong. Just to give you an idea how strong it is. Like, I can basically kill Cloud at 55% here. I will say maybe a little bit more. Let's say 60. As you can see, a smash attack that kills the 60 is pretty crazy. Um, and force smash comes out decently fast. It's not like it's a, it's a an Ike's force smash where it's really hard to land. This move is pretty easy to land compared to that. Down smash is also absolutely ridiculous and it does a tremendous amount of damage as well. Um, down smash has this advantage, right? Where as you're doing um, down smash, you see how King K. Rool jumps off the ground. This means that you can dodge low profile and sometimes medium profile moves, which means that there's a lot of times where you can be next to someone, you expect a jab combo, and then you down smash over and hit them and kill them pretty early. It's actually really frustrating to do so online. I've gotten hit by a few of these, and it's pretty annoying every single time. The force smash is pretty much your landing punish. Like if you see someone landing on top of you, you can dash, force smash. They'll, they'll die pretty early. You can down smash against low profile moves. And up smash is strictly a platform pressure. Now, the reason this is good is because when someone's blocking, this move has multiple hitboxes. It has a hitbox on the way up, on the way down, on the way during. It has a bunch of hitboxes, making it pretty annoying to, uh, to see coming. It has a significant amount of cooldown at the end. As you can see, it has a big amount of lag, but it comes up pretty instant. So it's actually, if you see someone landing, you can just charge it and then release it. And it's a really good anti-aerial as well. It does a good amount of damage as well. So I like this move quite a bit. Now in terms of his specials, we have the crown. We have the cannon right here. Um, we have the counter, which is also a reflector as well. And then we have his up B. Now things to note as we go through his specials. First of all, his side B right here, the crown actually does a lot of damage and it has a hitbox on the way in and on the way back. So when you throw it here, you can actually get hit by uh, two times. Um, one thing to note though is that King Karoo actually gets super armor during this move. So like while I throw out the crown, I actually have super armor. So if I see a move that uh, my opponent is throwing like a projectile or they're doing something, I can just literally just crown even at close range and it can protect me. One thing to note though is that if the crown for some reason doesn't really return to you like that, it misses and the crown goes off the level, King Karoo will lose the crown and then the crown will return here. Your opponent can use the crown against you. Um, and if King K. Rool comes into proximity, he actually just picks it up automatically. That animation when he picks it up, he actually lags and you can't do anything about it. However, if you do an action as he is picking up the crown, you actually can evade the lag. So for example, if I do neutral air here, I do a neutral air and I skip the animation of King K. Rool being defenseless and grabbing the crown. So that's the only weakness. This projectile is actually really good because you can throw the crown on the way back. You can react. You can combo off of the crown. You can also uh, use the super armor to get through things. And then at the same time, your opponent doesn't have too much counterplay against it unless you miss the crown on the way back. And then um, they catch it and they can use it against you. It is pretty strong though. Now, neutral B works in a few different ways. First of all, um, if you neutral B, just like that, you shoot the cannonball and that's that. The cannonball goes a pretty far distance, actually. I mean, if you look at the distance it goes, it goes almost the entire stage distance. So it goes a pretty long way. You can camp with this. Um, if you hold the B button, you actually start sucking in. Um, and as you start sucking in, um, you actually can indeed suck the opponent in. Let me see if I can um, get Cloud here to cooperate with me. There you go. And then that throw animation actually is really good at the ledge. Like if someone's here at the ledge, you can throw out the projectile to make them too go to the ledge. And then this can cover normal get up, jump, get up attack, except roll. Uh, keep in mind though, you can suck in for forever. There is a moment, even though if you're holding B, the animation will uh, will end. So keep that in mind. Um, another thing that you have to understand about this move is that you can actually suck in the cannonball as well. And then you can throw it out uh, a different direction. 
For example, you can throw it up. You can throw it in a diagonal. For example, if you hit your opponent with the cannonball here, and then you suck it in, you can choose the direction in which it goes, which is really, really useful as well. So you can combo things into it. I've seen some pretty creative things from it, like that, for example, there's a diagonal, and then you can hit people into the cannonball, and it's really, as, as after you suck it in and throw it out, it's extremely strong. And it's, you can actually kill people really easily with that. It kills really early. Um, so that's one thing to keep in mind. The other thing, though, that I want to talk about is that the stuck-in part of, or the suction part of the neutral B, it actually has very low end lag. So you can actually do it at the ledge, and it has almost no commitment. It's a pretty good option. Now, counter right here, um, it is both a counter and a reflector. Um, so you can counter moves and also reflect, which is pretty nutty. So, for example, I can reflect uh, Cloud's neutral B right here. One thing to note, though, is that this move is dependent on the armor mechanic. And also, it doesn't protect uh, behind him, above him, or pretty much anywhere but the belly. So, while it is very good, it only covers the belly. So, it does have its limitations. Now, a B may seem very lackluster. As you can see, it's just, it's just this. You know, you might feel like you're very vulnerable. And while you are... This move, for some weird reason, it actually has a very strong and big hitbox above him. So too much to a point where I've done moves like Cloud Downer on top of this, and King Heroes up B will win. So generally, if you recover in ways where you go under the lip of the station and you just go up along the ledge, you're actually really safe here. And you can drift a good amount here just to cover yourself. Um, it also has pretty low end lag as well for an up B. As, he, as you can see, you can shield uh, a little bit after. It also has a pet box on the way up. Uh, I've seen people kill with this up B because you can kind of just drag your opponent like this. So for example, let's say Cloud goes up on this platform right here. You're actually, you actually can KO people with this move. So it's actually just really crazy. Um, where you can actually snipe off some quick kills with it. So this up B is actually really good. It has one of the best recoveries out of any heavy in the entire game. It may actually be the best recovery for any heavy. So it's actually amazing. And I feel like it's a big boost for King Kiro's viability. Now let's move on into his throws. Uh, down throw, like I explained earlier, it buries you. Um, it doesn't do too much damage, but at very high percents, you can sort of guarantee a force smash or guarantee um, jab combo or maybe a four tilt out of it um, to get a uh, guaranteed kill. This is like around like 140, 130% plus, I'll say. Um, then you have up throw, which is your most damaging throw. It does a nice, <laughs> nice, a lot of damage. <laughs> um, fourth throw does a decent amount of damage and it puts you in an angle where you can edge guard if you grab someone by the ledge fourth throw is quite nice and then back throw is a pretty strong throw as well it actually is a kill throw um so if you catch someone by the ledge you can just grab them here and back throw them like a 120 130 and it can kill um so back throw is your kill throw fourth throw is just positional throw up throw is your most damaging throw and down throw is your at high percent only combo throw so you're mostly going to be up throwing if anything now we covered the throws, we cover smash attacks, we covered the the basic tilt and all that, but we still have the aerials to do so. Now you have neutral air, border, back air, upper, and down. Now <clears throat> let's start with neutral air. I think neutral air is very likely to be his best aerial. It's because you have super armor right here, and you can actually just approach from above into smash attacks, into tilt. You can also edge guard. As you saw, I can just, for example, throw Cloud off the level right here. And then I can use my neutral air um, to edge guard Cloud. And Cloud can't really do too much about it, simply because my armor will beat out his up B. As you can see, even though we trade, I still win. Because why? I have the super armor. So this move is amazing. You can also land into this move into like four tilt. You can also land into this move into a jab combo low percent. There's many options you can do out of jab. Very, very flexible. Low end like move, amazing. Um, Forder is a very good approach option. It kind of works like Diddy Cons Forder. Not quite as fast, but if you see someone approaching in the air and you're running around, you can jump forward it. It has a very decent amount of knockback, good damage, and you can kill with it. As you can see right here, I can drag someone out with the opponent. It's a very good anti arrow right here. You can also use it to land with the headbox, jump, and then forward on your way down to hit short characters or hit someone on the platform. Very good with that. Backer is extremely strong and it has two hitboxes. Um, it has a spike. If you hit it like that, I will say like towards towards like the you see how he punches down as he's punching down 
um, you get the spike portion. And it's also a very strong backer nonetheless. Like, even if you don't get the spike, um, the normal backer part can just kill you very, uh, kill you quite early. I've died to this move in the center of the stage at ludicrous percent, so that's something to be mindful of. As you can see, that move can just kill you. Backer is really slow, though. It has a good amount of cooldown, and it's a pretty decent commitment. I will say every time you use backer, you want to do it out of a whole full hop, so you don't take the damage reduction out of short hops and full hops, because if you full hop, you do your normal aerial damage, but if you short hop, you lose the percentage. Um, you want this backer to do as much damage as possible, so it's as safe as possible, even though it's a little bit laggy. Because the more damage it does to a shield, the safer the move is. So that's to be mind mindful of. Um, up there has this very weird property where it can, where it kind of lunges um, King K. Rool upwards. It has a, it comes out really fast and it's really strong actually. You can kill someone really early with this move. Um, but and it does a good amount of damage. But um, it also has the belly as well to cover your butt. One thing to be mindful of is that this move has a tremendous amount of end lag. So for example, that's how how much end lag I have. I'm mashing air dodge right here. You see how much end lag that has? So it's the kind of move that you know you're going to hit because you're surprising your opponent. So you have speed in your favor and strength, but you don't have security. So like if your opponent air dodges, you can't really follow him up. So it's a, it's a commitment move. You can also use your upper to boost you up platforms. Like for example, I can jump here and then upper a certain way and it will lift me up into the platform. Finally, you have downer, which honestly is just a pretty basic just dump. It is a spike. It's good to edge guard if you don't want to go for the uh, back air, which can be annoying to land. Downer is just easier. Um, but it's absolutely nothing special. I think his best arrows are neutral air, border, and I will say probably upper. It's good to catch people um, off guard. Now, those are that's pretty much the moves that breakdown of King K. Rool. The way I will recommend playing his neutral is that you're going to focus on fourth tool to stop approaches and play a little bit defensive. As you get a hang of the opponent, you can start using neutral air to counter around your opponent's uh, defenses to get some aggression going on. Go for some grabs here and there. Use the crown to get yourself some ground. The crown is really good to cover ground because if someone's camping you or you can't approach, you can deflect things or you can use the crown to get uh, start approaching and doing some damage and some combos. As the opponent is jumping up in the air, don't be afraid to throw some uppers to cover the ground. You can also throw out some forwarders and if you feel really comfortable, you can also just throw in a, a backer as an edge guard or a forward as well, or a neutral, any of those options are. As you can see, King K. Rool's neutral is very basic, simply because all of his moves are useful. You can forward till, up till, you can, you can throw projectiles. These projectiles are both good. Both of these projectiles are good. The crown is good. The cannonball is good. These moves have super armor, so you can get in there and approach, or get in there, or get out of there and camp. Either way, there's options for you to do so. Well, regardless, um, in terms of characters that you are good against, I find King K. Rool to mostly do good against characters that don't overwhelm him with combos. Uh, because King K. Rool is big and he's heavy, so he takes combos really hard. So, like, for example, let's say he's fighting something like Peach, something like um, Krom, or characters that just have a bunch of combos. It just makes it really, really hard to uh, play because you get hit once and you take a massive amount of damage and they don't really let you come back to the level. There's also characters like Link that can throw the bomb down there and edge guard you really, really easily every time. But I'll, I won't say that King K. Rool has bad matchups. I feel like the most annoying character is probably Pikachu because Pikachu, Pichu, because even though you can now trade them and out damage them, it's really hard to hit them. They can edge guard you, they can gimp you, they can, uh, they can also combo the hell out of you, so I don't like those matchups because they're really short. But I feel I find King K. Rool to fare off decently well against most characters. It's not exactly a counter matchup so far that makes King K. Rool unplayable. Well, regardless, guys, that's pretty much the basics on how to play King K. Rool. Let me know if this video was helpful. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day today. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe so you guys can stay tuned with more videos here at the Zero channel. And with that said, I'll catch you around in the next one. Take care, everyone. See you around. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. You have a good one.